Hi everyone, I'm Matt Brill. I'm an Enterprise Coordinator with the East Sussex Careers Hub based at East Sussex County Council and co-funded by the Careers and Enterprise Company. Thanks very much for joining the session today, focusing on championing your curriculum in schools and colleges. Today we'll be talking about how you can make your subject even more exciting, relevant and appealing for students by bringing careers into the curriculum in quick and easy ways. Today is all about getting careers right across the curriculum inside and outside of the classroom, whether you're teaching in further education or secondary schools. I'll say a few quick words about the Careers Hub, uh, moving on to why education, uh, careers education is important and the latest thinking from the government. We'll spend time focusing on Gatsby, uh, a few of the Gatsby benchmarks and how we can embed careers into the curriculum as we move forward with the next academic year. A few words about the Careers Hub. So we're based within the East Sussex County Council building in Lewis, and we support schools and businesses to work towards strong careers provision uh, through linking with schools and colleges and the local business community. The Careers Hub East Sussex is underpinned by the Enterprise Advisor Network, which was established back in 2015. EA's Enterprise Advisors are volunteers from local businesses at senior level or running their own business, and they work strategically with career leaders across each of our schools and colleges. If you want more information about who your enterpriser is at your school or college, then please speak to your careers leader who will be working with that business um, at a strategic level. So we're going to look at why is careers education important? We'll look at the benefits for students and the legal requirements that schools and colleges need to meet. We all know that sometimes students struggle to see how what they are studying relates to their future plans and dreams. So I'm sure it's commonly that you hear, I'm never going to use that when I'm older, so maybe trigonometry. When's this ever going to be useful in work? By showing your students that your subject is relevant to their future life, it can help motivate them to study harder and work and try their best. Research by the Careers and Enterprise Company backed that up when they found that careers are included across the curriculum, it has a positive impact on young people's career readiness, so they're better prepared for the world of work. They also found that careers in the curriculum provide students improving, improve students' personal effectiveness, making them more self-aware, self-confident, and giving them better self-esteem and ultimately more control over their decisions. It was also found to be likely to improve educational outcomes, such as student attendance, uh, dropout rates, pushing up their attainment and encouraging successful progression. And obviously that has a knock on effect to reflecting well on you as teaching and tutorial staff and your school or college too. So the, this all stems from the career strategy that was rolled out by government in 2017 and then developed further as, through statutory guidance for schools on providing careers guidance in 2018. We're also finding across schools and colleges that there are much more, uh, many more comments being made by Ofsted as part of their inspections as they're looking to see this really ingrained across the whole school and college. It was found that if students were to have four or more, and that's now been increased to seven employer encounters throughout their school and college journey, they are up to 5% less likely to become neat and likely to earn around a fifth more in average salaries to students and learners who don't have access to those employer encounters. So that just goes to show how important that uh, employers are seen in this as well. Is careers my responsibility? So this slide is just a gentle reminder that it's everyone's responsibility. So you have a named careers leader who leads on the strategic whole school or college careers provision. Um, however, operationally, all teaching and tutorial staff members definitely have a role to play for careers and helping their students through that path through life. Just by being a role model, as well as bringing those examples into your classroom are just simple ways that you can help. The caveat being, and we make this very clear, that we're not asking tutors and teachers and teaching assistants to become careers guidance professionals. You are not and shouldn't be expected to uh, deliver guidance, which should only be carried out by a qualified careers advisor. So I'm just going to ask you to do a couple of exercises. If you're watching this remotely at home, then just to reflect for a couple of minutes. If you're working and um, watching this with uh, colleagues, just to have some discussion around your tables. So just pause the video here and think for two minutes about the main areas that you see as your responsibility for careers within your school or college.
Okay, hopefully you came through um, with some good ideas there. And just another two minutes if you want to pause the video again to again chat with colleagues or just self reflect about what input did you have from your careers advice or any careers activities back at school or college in your times. Again, feedback and share answers when you are together with your colleagues. So I'll just uh, pause the video and have a couple of minutes to think about that too. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but these are the eight Gatsby benchmarks. This is what all schools and colleges across East Sussex and nationally are using to reflect on the quality of their careers provision. Uh, I just want to focus on the fact it turns out percentages based on your careers leaders submitting a survey three times a year and based on their responses, it assesses the effectiveness of your careers provision against each of these eight areas. I've circled Gatsby benchmark two, four and five because this is really where you as teacher and tutor staff can have an impact. Gatsby benchmark two is around learning from careers and labour market information. Gatsby Benchmark 4 is all around linking curriculum learning to careers, so very much what's happening in the classroom. And Gatsby Benchmark 5 is all around encounters with employers and employees. I mentioned the importance earlier with that statistic of uh, student encounters with employers and how important that is on their future career. So just to summarise, particularly Gatsby Benchmarks 4 and 5 here. So Gatsby Benchmark 4, all teachers should link curriculum learning with careers. STEM subject teachers should highlight the relevance of STEM subjects for a wide range of future career paths. And for Gatsby 5 and those employer encounters, every student should have multiple opportunities to learn from employers about work, employment and the skills that are valued in the workplace. This can be through a range of enrichment activities, including visiting speakers, mentoring and enterprise schemes. We will come on to these later in the presentation as to how the Careers Hub can help you, as well as utilising online resources. So we'll now show you ways to quickly and easily get careers into lesson plans and across the whole curriculum and create meaningful encounters with employers and employees. Notice boards with subject specific careers information are a brilliant first step, a way to showcase your subject and inspire your students to start thinking about where their favourite subjects could lead. So this is an example of a STEM notice board from Hailsham Community College. So it shows information from tomorrow's engineers, photos of students visiting University of Brighton's taste today and taking part in a crest competition. So do check, are these boards up in all of your departments? And is there anything you could potentially bring in to make your subject specific area appeal from a careers perspective? There's a huge amount of free subject specific careers information also available online, which we'll mention later on in the presentation. So alumni contacts are a great way to show how your subject area can lead on to success, whether it be in other areas of further education, higher education, apprenticeships or employment. So you may be as a teacher or a tutor, an active user on LinkedIn and could even start forming your own alumni network independently to keep in touch with. Your best opportunity of developing these links is by asking your students while they are in your classrooms and lecture theatres, would they potentially like to come back and speak to other students one day? So some other ideas from uh, schools here, uh, Heathfield Community College have a notice board that show uh, mini interviews with alumni uh, and a destinations board showing where they went on to next uh, in terms of their future moves, whether again it be FE from year 11 or HE from year 13. Here's a notice board from St Richard's College. Uh, moving on from uh, alumni insights, so they've taken it another step in showing alumni uh, destinations on a worldwide basis and also included some words of wisdom uh, where alumni pass on insights to students. So again, you could look to build up these kind of boards uh, within your department areas and they're real valuable insights when students speak to or see examples of uh, alumni speaking about their journeys and history, having just sat in their shoes and their seats a, a few years before that. So there's a lot of experience coming from you as a teacher. So another step into incorporating careers into the curriculum is to talk about your own experience. So your first job or potentially even talking about your dream job. So you can feel confident discussing your own career because you're the expert on your own life. You're not giving careers guidance, which you stress that you shouldn't be doing, but you're merely sharing your story. So you can do this within PS PSHE in a school or a starter activity, and you can also bring into college lessons and tutorial 
tutorials with your learners. When Careers Hub Enterprise coordinators have gone out and delivered these sessions on campuses, we ask this question to staff and typically around 80, 85 percent of teachers and tutors hands go up to say that they taught in other roles prior to teaching or in between stints in, in, in teaching. So use this and impart knowledge as well as colleague stories too. So you've got a huge bank of career journeys and pathways which are free within your own school and colleges teaching units and so utilise it. It's really thought provoking for your students and may help them to see you in a very different light too. So a couple of exercises which again you might just want to pause the video. So if you're sitting with other peer members of your team, uh, maybe chat for a couple of minutes about um, having and reflect on have you worked yourself in a non-education setting in the past? So what did you do? What did you like about the job? And from it, are there any words of wisdom that you could impart to your students and learners? Maybe what is your dream job if it's something different to what you're already doing? So speak and feedback uh, when you're with colleagues. So you can do this even if you're remotely for now, write down some thoughts, but tap into that knowledge around you when you're back in your school or college. So think also about how you can weave some of your working examples into your own lesson plans and signposting with your learners if you're not already doing so. Uh, they really do trigger some great conversations. So we found plenty of examples from doing this across East Sussex schools and colleges, people that have run their own businesses. We've had a sea captain um, to people that have worked in a malaria research lab. So there's a lot of unhidden, uh, a lot of hidden stories that, that are out there for you. So another little activity that you could possibly bring is to use career topics to warm up students in classes or tutorials um, and just introdu introducing a topic and creating some conversation. So you can use any picture that you like. So as an example, in a PE or sports and public services lesson, you could bring in a discussion around careers in sport using the picture, for instance, of a, a football stadium. So there's some obvious job roles that might be attached to uh, this particular picture. Um, but you can bring in an element of competition. So ask the students to give them two minutes, pair them off and to ask them to write down as many jobs as they can think of that are linked, however loosely, into that setting of the photo in front of them. They can then compare that list with their partners and they get a point for every job that they list that their partner doesn't. It's great for stimulating conversation and ideas around some of the more unusual jobs. So, for instance, on here, Students may not necessarily think about catering or uh, other security roles or, or the building, the infrastructure that goes into the stadium. So there are more subject areas and pictures all over the Internet that you can potentially use. So again, maybe pause this video uh, after each of one of the next few slides and have a think of maybe half a dozen job roles within the sector. And you can also be thinking on how those might map in with different subject areas that could be relevant for each. And no doubt you'll find plenty of overlap uh, within your school and college departments and curriculum areas. If you're watching in groups, then do partner off with a colleague and compete over your six roles and award points. And then again, open up those discussion with your colleagues around where there could be overlap across departments. So do pause the visio after each picture. So here, for instance, we have a cruise ship. So again, maybe think about the jobs that can be associated with that picture. We have a building of the Shard in London. Getting maybe thoughts more around the construction and engineering as well as support services and business roles there. Picture of a theatre. So again, you can easily use this in arts, culture, media. So again, thinking of job roles that may go alongside this. And last but not least, uh, you could talk about this in a health and social care setting. Uh, so we've got a picture of Eastbourne General Hospital and also an Eastbourne care home. So it gets people and it gets students um, as well as yourselves thinking about roles in both the NHS and I think what's come to the fuel even more so in recent times, uh, even more the value of care homes and the social care settings. So you mentioned there's a lot of online resources out there available to support you in your teaching and tutoring roles. So I just want to briefly introduce you to the careereseastsussex.co.uk website, which we developed within East Sussex County Council 
uh, and I will stress we are adding to all of the time. There's a couple of really useful parts that you might want to refer to for information. Do check the help and guidance section, but I'm going to specifically talk about a couple of uh, strands of the careers hub section today. So we've mentioned the eight Gatsby benchmarks. If we focus on the benchmarks we're talking about in this section, then we'll look at learning from career and labour market information. Here we've got a widget where students can look up a particular job and to see an outline through the LMI for all uh, websites of some labour market information. A really quick and easy way to pick up some, uh, some useful LMI there. In terms of Gatsby Benchmark 4, linking careers to the curriculum, we have a list of uh, a variety of websites and resources for you, including lesson plans here. We've got more starter ideas that we mentioned that you could easily bring into lessons, posters that you might add onto those uh, sector specific notice boards pinned up around college and school. And I also want to point you to the careers resources by curriculum subjects. So broken down in a range of areas, some really useful links that you could link into, again, depending on your cohorts um, for some industry insights. Uh, again, things like lesson plans, some student worksheets, and again, just to help you develop some, uh, some more knowledge and specialist knowledge um, to, to help you bring careers into the curriculum learning. So do have a peruse through that. There are many many industry sectors covered that we're always adding to. And last but not least, I've mentioned Gatsby Benchmark 5, so encounters with employers and employees. So again, great here for a few links where you can arrange to bring in speakers as well as utilising what we offer as a careers hub, which I'll mention later in the session. Uh, and you've also got some lesson plans here, so recommended by the careers and enterprise company to help deliver employer engagement in the classroom. There's links to things, other uh, toolkits and Barclays life skills amongst other bits and pieces. So a very useful resource that again, you might want to tap into um, following this session. So there's some great salary exercises that are also great to potentially engage your learners of all ages. So it's a higher or lower game involving careers. So as I click through, just play along. Just say higher or lower. I'll go slowly enough for you to have a guess. We've got a couple more examples of that, so I'd be uh, interested to know how everyone gets on. Here's a second round, starting with environmental health officer. And a final example for you, another 10 new jobs here, starting with musician. On £21,410 on average earnings a year. So hopefully you can see it's very simple. It's simple to just design something like this in PowerPoint, but these exercises are brilliant for opening up discussions and can also be opened up to talk around budgeting and finances in life. So uh, you could translate this into a student tutorial or part of a maths or a functional skills lesson, as well as develop con 
conversations in subject specific careers areas and speaking about the range of other roles, possibly at a more senior or junior level in each industry area um, to help learners with their own aspirations and career paths. So there are a range of resources available to obtain LMI or labour market information, which can provide examples to also bring into your curriculum delivery. I've mentioned the Careers East Sussex website, which I walked you around earlier for a range of signposted links. And here are a few others. So you have East Sussex in figures, which has a number of sector uh, reports available to download. The National Careers Service and Prospects websites there both have job profiling sections, which can give an overview of careers, skills, again, thinking of those discussions in lessons, as well as LMI around growth or contracting of industry sectors and roles, which is very important at this time too. So you can broadly explore these by areas such as health and social care, engineering and maintenance and business and finance, for instance, or alternatively, you can focus on specific roles. The NOMIS website also enables you to access a range of employment statistics and also break that down by local authority area. So again, you can easily drop a few of these statistics or graphs and pieces of data into lessons to help substantiate part of your curriculum delivery. Last but not least, my colleague Sam Rhodes at East Sussex County Council produces a brilliant LMI bulletin, uh, which is a mailer that's sent out regularly to any East Sussex school and college staff members uh, and partners and stakeholders that may want to sign up to it. So this provides a range of uh, updates across various sectors, especially useful during these challenging times to help keep abreast of the local economy and trends. Again, just to stress that teachers and tutors are not being asked to deliver guidance, but you could certainly bring in some of these figures and examples into your classroom delivery. You can also bring local and national labour market information to your lessons to so show students how studying your subject area is directly relevant to jobs that are in demand here in East Sussex. So as a for instance, here's a graph that shows rising employment prospects, certainly pre-COVID in digital and media and the creative and cultural industries in East Sussex. Reading, writing, communication and analytical skills are key employability skills in those sectors. So you could use this information to highlight for students in relevant subjects such as English and art, for instance. Alternatively, in a maths or again a functional skills maths class, you can incorporate careers data showing examples of graphical analysis and bringing in percentages uh, and information such as that. So you can also set up quizzes. So there's some great resources such as quizzes.com and Slido is another great website. So we're just going to run through an example game just around labour market information that you can easily run with your students just over technology available within your classrooms. Do play along with us. So on average, how many hours a week do people in the southeast work? I'll let you have a think about the answer. What were the average gross annual earnings of employees working in East Sussex in 2018? Which East Sussex district had the highest rate of new business registrations in 2018? Number four, which sector in East Sussex had the lowest percentage of women entering education and training in 2016 to 2017? And 
last but not least, which sector in East Sussex had the lowest percentage of men entering education and training in 2016 to 2017? As you can see, you can bring an element of competition into the classroom in whatever ages you might run through. So here's another idea to help you in the classroom setting. You can invite your students to take the lead. So getting them involved in teaching their peers about careers, which can be adopted across colleges and schools. So an example here from St Richard's Catholic College in Bexhill. saw one of our employer volunteers and HR manager from AXA working closely with their careers leader to help teach year nine students how to deliver careers lessons in year seven PSHE. So your st student leaders might be an obvious choice or maybe students who have been on work experience or tours could talk about their experience, particularly when you're looking at the key stage four and five levels. Students can find career materials to fill those notice boards we talked about, it potentially interview alumni and pass on what they've learned on work experience, doing part time work and or volunteering. Again, especially in colleges, please remember you have a huge resource bank and this can be promoted to support learners to also help their own employability skills. Another way to inspire your students is by um, getting them to commit to your subject. Um, and again, online links can help uh, doing so. Here's a couple as a starting point. You've got the BBC Bite Size Careers uh, website, which asks student that very question, where could your favourite subject take you? The I Could website has an explore section which has videos uh, and insights into uh, various uh, job roles and people working within particular sectors and their journeys to get there. Uh, and that also contains labour market information. So again, you might want to bring some aspects of that into uh, your uh, classroom examples. Remember, obviously, the Careers East Sussex website that we mentioned uh, earlier on. And there's also skills assessments that students can always be pointed to through the National Careers Service as well. I mentioned earlier one of the Gatsby benchmarks that schools are also working towards is helping uh, to provide students with employer encounters and that's right the way from years seven through to 13. So we've got a huge bank of uh, around 200 business volunteers across uh, our given hour campaign and industry champions who we recruit for and this is a really uh, important way that we can uh, support as a careers hub. So you can come to us and say that you're looking to put on a talk or an assembly or um, a, an employer to come in and maybe have roundtable Q&As or almost like a networking breakfast, which we've seen done in schools. And this is a great way where students can find out from people working in the hub of industry about their experience, in addition to that experience that you bring as uh, teachers and tutors as well. And last but not least, we can also help with our open doors and industry visit initiative. So we've got an open doors program that traditionally runs around October to December. Um, in light of COVID, we've been putting together some uh, plans for some remote and virtual uh, tours as well. But we're still hoping to run this in some form in the next academic year and beyond. So you've got a chance, it's all free to link in with this initiative. Uh, a handful or a busload of students can potentially go and visit um, one of a range of employers. Uh, it's a brilliant way to introduce learners to the many industries uh, and people that are around to support in East Sussex. So get in touch to let us know if you'd potentially like to go out because we can open this up through the year and approximate group numbers. As I say, we've also got a U channel, YouTube channel and we will be promoting uh, employer videos through that method as well. Do remember as well that any trip at school and college level can amalgamate careers. So you can prepare for the trip by asking students to write some questions to our staff that they meet um, or to do some, uh, and some research of the industry in advance. During the trip, they can carry out mini interviews with people that they meet as well. So coming home on the coach, you can ask students about the job roles they saw, what they could do next uh, in terms of follow-up plans to find out about the sector. 
So to close, do feel free to contact us with any questions through our Careers Hub team or via your careers leader. The team email address is at the top of that slide, enterprise coordinator at esussex.gov.uk. We also across various forms of social media. We have a Twitter account, so please do follow us. Uh, do also follow our page on the Careers, East, Careers Hub East Sussex LinkedIn page. And as I've mentioned, we're developing our YouTube channel. So through the East Sussex County Council channel, we have a Careers Hub East Sussex playlist where uh, any webinars such as this and employer videos are being uploaded to. So that just leads me to say thank you so much for your time. I hope you found this session useful and thanks so much for watching. Thank you.